Have you ever felt confused about M1 Finance? You don't know how to use it? In this video, I will show you exactly step by step how to use the M1 Finance platform on your phone. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, the number one place for you to learn about the art and beauty of dividend investing. Speaking of dividend investing, my favorite platform to use for dividend investing is M1 Finance because it allows you to do automatic dividend reinvesting, drip dividend reinvestment plan, and it also allows you to buy fractional shares, so I'm able to buy some of these very expensive stocks like Amazon and it's 3000s. I'm able to buy that with my limited amount of money. And so let's dive deep into this app to see how to actually use it. So this is my M1 Finance portfolio. I named it Cherry's Passive Income because I do want this to be a passive income that I don't have to actively work for that will run in the background without me actively working for it. And so you can see right here, my account value is $6,268.17. I'm up by 17.11%. And so to start your account, there are a couple things that you can do. First of all, you can see over here, you can add account and you can add the different types. The passive income account that I just showed you, that is my individual investing, that is a taxable account that is used with after-tax money and all the gains that you have, the capital gains is going to be taxed. And then there's also joint investing, opening a taxable joint brokerage account, which I don't have anything to join with because I'm single. And then there's also retirement. There's the different types of retirement accounts and disclosure. I also have a retirement account with M1 Finance. And there's also a trust account, opening an investment account for my trust. I don't have any trust, but one day I will. And uh, let's go back. So after you open your account, you will see something like this. You will see create new pie because that is the first thing that you have to do. So over here, you can see my different investment portfolios and this, my traditional IRA, I have not funded. I don't have anything in this yet. And so when it's zero dollars, the first thing that you have to do is build your portfolio and you can browse your pies. So you can look at my pie, for example, which is going to be linked in the info box. You can look at many different pies. You can also look into extra pies, which is something that M1 Finance has. It's basically like index funds and they have different expenses, which you have to look out for. And uh, you can pick one that you like. So you can, for example, click into it and see the stats, how many holdings, what's expense ratio. 0.13 is really high. So I don't recommend you guys to get into this. Risk is low. Return is also not that high either. So this is not something that I personally want, ultra conservative. So these are some research that you can do. And then there are also different funds. So funds are also another option. You can look at VOO, VT Sachs. Do they have VT Sachs? They don't have VT Sachs, but um, you can look at different, oh, VTI is the alternative. Total stock market ETF. There are different ETFs that you can choose from. And of course, with ETFs also look into their expenses and you can see over here, the expenses are 0.03, which really isn't that much. And you can also see their dividends. And there are also individual stocks. So individual stocks, you probably know this, you can buy into a piece of different companies. So you can not only buy a piece, you can buy a fraction of a piece of different companies. So for example, if you really want to buy Apple, it's currently at $320 and three cents, and you currently don't have $300 to invest in Apple, or you don't want to invest all your $300 into Apple, you can buy a fraction of Apple shares. And I'm going to dive deeper into that soon. And uh, you might also be overwhelmed looking at all these uh, different options, my pies, expert pie, funds, stocks, what to invest in first. And so my personal approach would always be go for funds first, funds first, and then individual stocks because funds already diversified for you. So you will be exposed to a bigger, larger number of different stocks. And usually well-managed funds do give you a better return than the average investor can do. So this is definitely something that requires less research and also can give you a potential higher return. And the reason why I like to do individual stock investing is because it is quite fun. 
uh, feeling like there is a way to beat the market is quite fun. And also because of the no fees, because if you invest in any of the funds or even ETFs, you do have to pay fees. And you know me, if I can get it for free, I don't want to pay a fee. So that is why I prefer to do individual stock investing in my taxable account. And so after you add the slices, you also have to fund your account. And you can see the different transfers that I have. Basically, you just do move money and there are three options. There is one-time transfer, recurring transfer, and account transfer. So one-time transfer is basically just transferring one time from your bank account to your M1 Finance portfolio. I usually recommend transferring like a thousand dollars or something slightly larger just to kickstart your portfolio or else it might take you a long, long time until you see any like big movements or changes or upward slope. And then recurring transfer I also highly recommend because this allows you to manage your portfolio pretty hands off and hands free. This allows you to transfer money automatically without your interference. So you don't necessarily have to manually transfer money every single week from your bank account to your portfolio. And recurring transfer also allows you to do dollar cost averaging because you will be able to buy into a stock at different price points. If this week has a lower price point than last week, you'll be able to take advantage of the lower price point, dollar cost average your weight down without you manually interfering with the process because it is all automatically invested and transferred. And there's also account transfer, which I've done for my retirement account. I transferred from Fidelity to M1 Finance because I like the user interface much more. And so here are the three ways that you can move money into your portfolio. And after you pick your pie and after you move your money, you will be able to see something like this. So this is my passive income pie. If I click into it, you can see there are different sectors and also different heights for these pies. The longer ones means they're overfunded. So you can see for my bonds, I'm at 6.7% out of 3%, which means I have overfunded this slice of the pie. And then for the smaller ones, such as this one, this is healthcare. Healthcare, I've underfunded this, and you can see currently I'm at 12.8% out of 15%, which means if I have more gains from my other slices, it's going to feed into this slice since it is underfunded. And the beauty of M1 Finance is that it allows you to do not only automatic dividend reinvesting, but also buying fractional shares. So even if you have, let's say, for Tesla, currently I only have $572.30. That is all I have. I have 0.76 shares of Tesla stock. But you can see over here, the price is at 748. So I'm able to ride on the Tesla train without putting 700 of my money into Tesla. So this is definitely something that is very, very convenient and nice for expensive stocks. So you can see over here, even though I'm a dividend investor, I also have some stocks that don't pay dividend, like Tesla, for example, it does not pay dividend. But the reason why I put this in here is because it is too expensive. It is very expensive for me to get my foot into the door. So that's why I'd rather buy it piece by piece and dollar average my way. And because it's so volatile, I also feel better when I dollar cost average my way. Because even if it goes up, I won't pay that much more. And if it goes down, I'll be able to take advantage of that without trying to time the market. And same thing with Amazon, also very expensive. You can see the current share price is $2,079.28. It's not 3,000, made a mistake. But um, you can see over here, my average share price is $18,033.38. So this is actually significantly lower than the current price. And even though I don't have a full share of Amazon yet, I'm able to ride on this train and get the 25.51% return from my all-time range, just my five months of investing in Amazon because I can enter into the market before I even have the 2000 to invest in Amazon. So this is what is so great about M1 Finance and this is why I love M1 Finance so much. So that is the portfolio section and let's talk about activity. 
So within activity, you can see all the dividends and the different trades that you do. And also if you have any referrals, referral bonuses, and you can see over here, there are many, many different dividends that I got. You can also see a summary of my different dividends that I got in January over here. And this is the place that you can see all your activity and you can also filter it by the date range symbol or the type of activity. And then holdings is where you can see all your holdings and you can see I have Apple, ABBV, AFL, Mgen, Amazon, Ultrix, Bank of America, and the list goes on and on. I currently have 45 different holdings. And then you can also take a look at funding history, which is just how much I funded my account and I've withdrawn nothing so far. And then bank is where you can withdraw or deposit. And after we look through all the side tables over here, we can also look at spend. So Edwin Finance currently has a debit card that you can enroll in. I have not continued my enrollment because I was too lazy and I don't see the need, but this is definitely something that you can consider. Consider. It allows you to earn the APY of 1.5% and 1% cashback when I enroll in M1 Plus, which seems like a pretty good deal compared to the national average APY. And then we talked about transfer and then let's talk about borrow. So borrow is also something that M1 Finance has, but because I'm pretty risk averse, I don't really recommend anyone to invest with money that they don't have. So this is something that, yes, you can learn more about this and you can see that they don't have a very high interest rate but at the same time, do you really want to invest with money that you don't have yet? I'd rather, if I were you, I'd rather wait till I have that money, the money that I am able to lose, that I'm okay with losing, then I will actually invest that money. I don't wanna invest with money I don't have, just like how I don't wanna spend money that I don't have. So that's just my little opinion with borrowing and then there's also the research. So here you can read different articles and you can also see the different indexes. And those are the bottom menus. And on the top, you can see when you click on the announcement, it's announcement and you can see the different offers that they have. I'm gonna take a screenshot and show you my current account value that I talked about, my net cash flow, the cash flow, the cash I put into this portfolio is $5,756.26. My market gains is $511.91. My total gains is $566.59. My earned dividend is $54.68. And so overall, my return is 17.11%. So that is my account summary. And that is just my five months of using M1 Finance. As you can see, my starting date is September 10th. 2019 so it hasn't been that long and i already got a 17 percent gains as you can call that and so overall i really like m1 finance i like how simple it is i like the user interface and i feel like once you get used to a platform it makes a lot of sense it's very intuitive whereas for fidelity i also use as a traditional brokerage i still use for some of my other retirement accounts but overall i just feel like fidelity seems kind of outdated and it's not that intuitive and it does not give you pretty charts like m1 finance i really like how simple m1 finance is and how everything is so easy to move around and manipulate whereas for fidelity i feel like to do the same thing you have to take maybe three more steps to do the same thing and so that is why i personally like m1 finance and of course you can use it on your phone very easily which is also a plus whereas for fidelity i feel like it's harder for you to use on a phone it's way easier on a desktop because everything is so scrunched together and the words and numbers are so small and tiny you can't see them and so on the brighter note thank you so much for watching this whole video. I really had fun making this and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll see you in my next investing video with my dividend investing video and my journey video.